No, baby, that's for somebody else. We're just going to keep you right where you're at right now. The Wrestling Realm presents Break It Down with Brian H. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this edition of Break It Down with Brian H. Tonight's episode is going to be very different. Um, last week on Wrestling for the Culture, we had a discussion, racism in wrestling. Well, today, because we obviously we need to talk about that, but there's something else we need to talk about, and that is the unfortunate things such as sexual harassment that happens in the world of professional wrestling. A few weeks ago, I was on here and I told people it needs to stop. And I urged for allies. So on today's show, I'm joined by, you know, Blake. He was here in the last show. But I'm also joined by, for the first time, the one and only Miss Chrissy Rivera and Amber's back. So before we get started, I want everybody to introduce themselves. I'm going to start off with Chrissy because she's new, new to y'all for some of the people who uh, tune in to break it down with Brian H, who may not be familiar with her work, although you should because in my eyes and yours too, she's a legend. So Chrissy, take it away. <laughs> okay. Uh, I am a, I'll say a former professional wrestler because I haven't wrestled in about two years. I worked for places like CZW, WSU. Uh, a lot of companies basically on the Northeast circuit. Okay. And then we're going to go to Amber. Amber Rodriguez. Um, I feel like you may as well make me a co-host at this point, Brian. Because I've <laughs> <laughs> done so many episodes. Just but come on, like, just make me a co-host. <laughs> <laughs> so she doesn't really need an introduction. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and then, Blake, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Blake, known as Blizz. Um, I was the male of honor in this legend, Chrissy's wedding. So that means I'm a legend too. So legends with Amber and with Brian because Amber's a legend and Brian's oh. a legend too. <laughs> well, let's have this legendary panel over this discussion that <laughs> needs to happen. Um, so a little backstory. The previous panel racism and wrestling amber and i put together but for some reason she disappeared but she was not going to miss saying. this <laughs> she no showed the shows brother <laughs> How she no, I don't out like that <laughs> so my phone i dropped my phone two minutes before the show started Ooh. and it's my screen cracked Book and, the show like, and didn't show up and this what? is why your your envelope will be light tonight <laughs> <laughs> terrible well yeah but so now today you know uh amber and i we had, obviously we talked about it and she said that this was a subject that needed we needed to talk about i know a few weeks ago um on the internet the there was some there was the talk about czw wsu the company selling footage of footage that chrissy was a part of Blake was a part of. Chrissy's probably in some of the footage, because she has to be if I'm in it, um, where they were taking some of these matches that these women athletes were in and you, selling it as, you know, they were using it as a sex symbols. I'm not going to say it was sold as softcore porn, but it might as well have been. And I was offended because there were some of my friends on there. And I just wanted to uh, say, like, one of the things that Blake said constantly was, we have to keep talking about it. So, Blake, I'm going to let you pick up right there on why we need to keep talking about it. Um, well, one thing I want to say, too, is, uh, you know, um, footage was sold from both parties, for um, the, the women and the men. Um, and for the win women, it was more exploited as more of a could be looked at as a sexual thing and for the men it was exploited for you know hey these guys just basically you know do a whole bunch of stuff to hurt themselves you know not really understanding the art of deathmatch uh wrestling so um i i think it's important because a lot of stuff gets lost um especially this day and age with so much going on important topics um, well, topics in general can get lost and forgot about, especially in wrestling. 
And one of the reasons why something like this should happen um, from the numerous conversations that I've had with different people, whether they decided to speak out, whether they decided to not speak out, you hear things like, oh, well, you know, I mean, it's not like anything's going to happen. Or you hear things like, oh, well, you know, I'm at a better pace in my life. The common denominator of why things like this need to continue is you don't want it to happen to somebody else. Because if something like this happens to somebody else, you do not know how much further it can get. And you, it's something that nobody would even want on their conscience. And if it's something that you know that you can help prevent, then be somebody to stand up and help prevent it and stop saying I, 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 and look at the future of whether it's a student, whether it's somebody fresh into the business, whether it's somebody you may know, you don't want these type of things to happen to these women. Okay, Amber? Oh, so I don't know where to start. Follow um, that, Amber. <laughs> 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 so uh, I'll start by saying um, back in, I think it was like 2013, 14, whatever, um, me and Nyla aspired to work for this company, we wanted to work for WSU CCW. I mean, we would go on the road with you, Blake. Yeah. And, you know, to try and like even get noticed because, you know, seeing women like Chrissy, like Mia Yim, um, Sassy Stephanie, Amy Lee, any social, I can go on and on and on and just, you know, wanting to work with these great women. And, they had so many great women and it was such a great product and to see it be demeaned in the way that it was like Lufisto's video literally brought me to tears because it's so unfortunate that they would disrespect such an art and so many great, great performers that busted their asses just to get shit on. It's disgusting. So that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> Chrissy? Ooh, okay, how much time do we have on here? I got <laughs> load, the gun, I, load the gun I, up and shoot. I saw Amber um, with, with her cup of special drink, and I was like, man, if Chrissy's got to go, I might need a special drink as well. If I knew this was a 21 and up, like, bring your own drink <laughs> show, I would have had my bottle of wine here. Like, I feel very unprepared. <laughs> I would have been drinking a little bit before we started this, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so as far as the, specifically the WSU stuff and the CZW stuff, uh, I agree with what they both have to say, especially Blake saying that it needs to be talked about. It cannot be forgotten. There's so much stuff going on in the world right now. And not that the other stuff is not important because I feel everything that is going on in the world is important and is going to cha make changes for the better. But this can't be another thing that gets swept under the rug. So I feel it's very important to just keep making people aware and if it helps one other girl not go through something that one of us might have gone through, then I feel like I've helped in a way, you know, a way that I could. And it's just, it's so disrespectful to see the stuff that DJ Hyde is doing because I've known DJ Hyde for a long time. And at one time we were friends and I said this, I was on Shelly Martinez podcast last week and I said the same thing. Me and DJ were friends at one time. And as time went on, I was seeing the bad decisions he was making and I wasn't agreeing with them. I was seeing the bad business he was doing and it was hard to try to take myself out of that environment because of the love of the letters. And I'll be the first one to say that, you know, the love of the letters not that it blinded me, but it made me say like, I don't care. Not that I don't care, but like, I still want to work here. I want to work here for this company, the love of the company. And I'll push away what DJ is doing. You understand what I'm saying? So like, not that I was turning a blind eye, but it was like, we can make this product better without DJ. 
You know, like, yeah, DJ may own the company, but DJ doesn't make the company. The, the, the talent makes the company, the women, the men, the referees, the commentators, the photographers, the producers, everybody makes that company. It's not just one person, you know? So that's why I get so upset when I hear about the WSU stuff and like how, you know, they sold the footage to this company that a lot of us already know that this company, that's how they sell their product they sell it in a way that's to them sex sells so they portray it as it's going to be you know shows that the girls are like taking their tops off and stuff like that and I think it's disgusting because I went in WSU under the impression that I'm going there as as a talent not as somebody that's going there because you're taking shots of my butt you know so we were I'll say we were bamboozled because that's pretty much the best way to say it is like nobody agrees to that nobody signed anything. So if somebody wants to say, Oh, you signed away, you know, your name or, or, you know, your likeness that's BS because none of the girls would ever be like, do you think any of the girls would read a piece of paper and say, Oh yeah, that's what exactly what I want to be portrayed as my character that I've worked so hard for. Like, absolutely not. You know? So to hear the stuff that is currently being done with the women and the mistreatment and stuff like that. Like, I just, I can't, I, I can't keep quiet, you know? So if it gets me in any type of trouble or I don't get booked anymore, I really don't care. I really don't care. So it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. one of the things is like when I was thinking about this and I'm so happy, thank y'all for coming on because this wasn't a conversation I wanted to essentially have with myself. I didn't want this to be uh, me talking on the show. Um, you know, I brought it up and I expressed my, uh, the way I felt about it. But um, the thing working with, and I'm going to use, uh, you know, I work with Blake at WSU and CZW. And one of the things was, the reason why he brought me and our friend Hugh Scott of Hazmat Photos in, because he knew our respect and credibility, and he knew that we would be professional. Because he bringing us in, we represent him. And one of the things, so I've been, brought, uh, people may know, I've been reading this book, Staying in the Game. Uh, it's called The Playbook for Beating Workplace Sexual Harassment by my good friend, Adrian Lawrence. And one of the things that, you know, she talks about is harass holes. And the thing is, um, the reason why it's important for us to have this conversation is because people don't realize that there's so much that can fall under sexual harassment. And I, when I was reading this, I'm gonna be honest with you, I had um, a lot of stuff that went on at WSU in the mind, even a lot of stuff like, you know, I, I would go back and think, okay, did we do this? No. Did we do that? No. Um, you know, sexual harassment, if I look at you and you feel uncomfortable, granted, it may be hard to prove, but that's sexual harassment. You know, it's not just touching, grabbing, feeling. If I ask you out to dinner and you say no, and then I ask you again. And I think it's important that, you know, we speak up. And that's the one thing I want to say about Blake when he's right here is I stood side by side with him during his photography. And I can tell you, I never seen him leer at anybody. I never seen him make snarky comments. I never heard of, it was never a situation where, oh, it's just guys being guys. Was there other men like that? Absolutely. But when it came to me, Blake and Hugh, and what we were doing with our work, that didn't happen. And, and, and that's the thing. And, and Chrissy, you brought up um, not getting swept under the rug. So there was a post on Instagram and it was talking about all the things that's going on. It said, police brutality is just one factor of systematic racism we haven't touched. Education, housing, public equity, hiring discrimination, sexual harassment, colorism, and more. And that's what I thought about. I said, while this is going on right now with the world under the pandemic, while we're dealing with systematic racism, sexual harassment needs to be addressed as well. So, and that's the thing, like you said, we don't want to sweep this under the rug, you know. Um, Without, if I want, um, and Chrissy, I had a question for you. Mm. And I was listening to this, your appearance on Shelly Martinez, and I heard you say something. And 
because I know you, it made so much sense. And you were saying about speaking up and you're talking about why it's not your place to speak up when somebody else won't. Anybody else may have said, well, wait a minute. Why wouldn't you speak up? But one of the things you said was, and which you, you know, further on this point was it's so much that comes with it that perhaps the person, if you speak up for them, maybe they're not ready to deal with the backlash. Can you speak on that? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I definitely saw a lot of things um, during my tenure of, res- of wrestling and a lot of things I did not agree with. I'm not going to say it was all, you know, it was all bad, but I did see a lot of stuff that happened to a lot of other people. And, you know, in wrestling, you're kind of taught to like turn a blind eye or like ears, eyes, open mouth shut. That's what you were trained. You know, that's how I was trained. And it's kind of like one of those things, like you don't speak, you don't really speak up and you kind of just like, that's just how it is. That's just how it is, you know? And it's not, I, I always felt like it's, while it's not right, if something is currently happening, you have to think about who it's happening to and how it affects them. So yeah, I might speak to that, that woman later on and say like, Hey, are you okay? Like that wasn't cool or that's not all right. If you want to talk, like we can talk about it, but I'm not going to go to Twitter and be like, Oh, this happened to so-and-so in, you know, the PW locker room or the CZW locker room or whatever, you know, whatever locker room it was, because that's not, I feel like that's not fair to that person because yeah, they're probably going to get a lot of support from people, especially in 2020, but you know, you have those handful of assholes who are going to like harass that girl or send her threatening messages. Like we've seen with LaFisto, like, her just speaking out on the WSU, WSU stuff, like the messages she's getting and it's like, oh, people are commenting on like her gear and stuff like that. It's like, oh, because a lot of the girls do customs, like it's okay for this to happen. And, and it's like a whole nother, you're opening a whole nother can of worms for that person. So I just feel like they have to decide on their own how they're going to handle it. Like you can't tell somebody how to handle that situation. You can give the best advice that you can and lend an ear or whatever. But at the end of the day, I feel in my opinion, it's not my place to go and say, Oh yeah, Amber Rodriguez, this happened to her last week when I was at at a wrestling show. You know, I, I think that's wrong. So I know a lot of girls are afraid to speak up. So like I said, I'll offer, you know, any help that I can, if they want to, you know, speak to me or speak to somebody else, but like, I'm not going to put that business out there. Amber, you like, you was ready to jump in. Yeah. Well, to add to that, you know, it's like, yeah, she made so many great points. And the biggest thing is like, it's that person's story to tell, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, uh, kind of like what happened with, um, La Rosa Negra and Tessa Blanchard, I think it was, and then everyone's coming out on Twitter, but they weren't naming the person. Then, you know, Rosa finally came out and said it was me, but I asked for them not to, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but not to go into detail or something like that. And that's great because it's her story to tell. Like, yes, it bothers you. Yes, you want to do something about it. Yes, you want justice for it. But at the end of the day, it didn't personally happen to you. It happened to them. And it's, it's up to them as far as how they want to handle it. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It makes 100% sense. And the thing, too, is, like, I mean, when you're in these locker rooms, you do see a lot of things. And, like, for me, it wasn't just about, like, booking or photography or agenting or whatever. Like Amber said it earlier, like we used to go to shows together, you know, so we're talking two hours riding there, two hours back. So her, myself, Nyla, you know, Grim, whoever's in a car, Leo, it doesn't matter. We're all like basically talking on how we, you know, hey, what do you think we can do to get this chance there and all that. So for me, not only do I want to bring people that I think are good representation of myself and could be great um, to help them, but for me personally, 
I felt like I wanted, I don't want to, how do I say it? Like protect these people as well. So like, if I'm in that locker room and Christina, Brian, you've seen it. Like if there were certain themes that we did, you know, way beforehand, I'm like, who wants to do this? All right. How can you make it your own? Do this, do that. And if somebody wanted to do something and let's just say they didn't want a bunch of people to be looking and all that, we would black out the window, you know, because when we were at the skate zone, there's a big window. We would black it out. We I would was, have I was one the, of the only people holding it, me and him. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we would have people at the door, like, you can't come in right now, you know, like, because it's that comfortability and you don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable or feel like, oh, you know, uh, I'm scared of this and scared of that. And there's so many stories, like, I mean, there was, and, and like, I'm not going to name names, but there was a certain person when this stuff started to hit the net that she finally came out with her story. And this was stories that like Chrissy and I've known for years, but it was her time to finally come out with the story. And when she came out with it, I mean, she was leading the charge and, you know, I talked to her and she personally was like, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. I don't want this to happen to anybody else. I'm ready to tell my story. And I was super proud of it, you know, because you holding that in for so long and the main reason why you want to get it out is to bring awareness and to hope that nobody else has to deal with it. That makes it like a weight off your shoulder. But the thing that makes everything so sad is when you've been sharing a locker room with so many people and they have the same exact story or worse and you didn't know about it. And it's like, damn, you, it, we could have made a difference for a whole entire locker room of women. And, and then, as weird as it sounds, as men too, because there's certain men that may have been dating this women, these women and didn't know. Or certain men that's like, yo, that's like my sister. And they didn't know. So it, you bring awareness to something and everybody looks at it like, oh, well, they're just taking, not everybody, but there are people that look at it like, well, they're just taking time to bash this and bash that. No. You can't bash something that bashes itself. And like, I'm not trying to be funny, but they bash themselves. I don't need to waste my time to bash them. They do it to themselves. The people that run that company do it to themselves, not the talent. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to bring awareness to something and shout out to Lefisto, you know, that, that she wanted to speak out with it because when I first started, you know, Chrissy and Lefisto and Noel Harlow were like the first three women I met. So like, and Noel and Chrissy were the first women I ever saw really doing eight by tens and stuff like that. And Lefisto, she blew me away. You know, um, she's wrestling men and all this. And, you know, years later, you see two of those women in this situation and speaking their hearts out, you damn right people like me are going to continue to back them up and have their back because I know right from right and wrong from wrong. And the, if you're going to, it's like I said at the end of my statement that I put on Twitter, all money ain't good money. And the person that runs the company and the person that backs the person that runs the money, they knew that wasn't good money. So you can't just always blame just that one person. Blame those people that help him make those dumbass decisions as well. That's true. Yeah, and, and the thing is, um, for people out there listening, for the men and the women, but for the men, it's important for us to be allies, especially men. Um, you look at Hollywood and you look at Bill Cosby and you know the guy from uh, CBS and NBC, a lot of times when the women do speak out, like Amber and Chrissy and Blake just said, they're getting bashed. They're getting these crude comments online. But, you know, and study shows that just historically, historically, the society, America, let's call it what it is. They don't listen to women when it comes to these things. The first thing they want to do is victim shame. And I have a huge problem with that. Um, like I said about the customs. I have a huge problem when somebody say, oh, well, she dressed that way. Uh, I remember when I was in college, there was a thing called Denim Day. And the reason why it was Denim Day, because they were talking about a woman who had, you know, been sexually assaulted and said, well, her jeans 
were too tight. So she obviously had to like take them off or something. I may have it wrong, but I believe that's how it was. Um, and, and, and I have a problem with that. My thing is a, a woman or man can walk down the street butt naked if they choose to, and you dare not touch them. Amber? Yeah, so <laughs> it bothers me so much to say that a female worker deserves to be treated a certain way because she does customs is literally the same thing as saying, oh, she deserved to be raped because look at how short her skirt was. Look at what she had on. No, how about these men refrain from being pigs? Mm-hmm. Like, why isn't that the thought? And it's so disgusting to me, you know? And I always say, cancel culture exists everywhere except professional wrestling. Mm. There are men who are, and you know, sexual harassment is one thing, and pedophilia is another thing. And these men are still getting booked. They're still working. No one bats an eye. Mm-hmm. Jason Reigns is still getting booked. James Ellsworth is still getting booked. I have a huge I problem with James Ellsworth still getting, still getting booked. I, oh, I'm going there. I'm getting there. So <laughs> I started wrestling when I was 15. Like Brian and Blake, you guys know me since I was like 16 years old. Yeah. And I would be in locker rooms and literally get hit on by the boys as a fucking child. And it was funny and it was cute. And no one batted an eye. Like, yes, I was blessed to come up in the business with my family, with my brothers. But the the truth is they weren't always around. And, you know, unfortunately, I still was exposed and seen a lot of shit that I did not deserve. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's disgusting that these men are still getting booked. You know, I was hit on by James Ellsworth from the time I was 16 until adulthood and it was funny and everybody was giggling you know and then suddenly it comes out that he tried it with you know another underage girl and they got receipts yeah and and it was like oh no and everyone was so outraged for like a week Mm -hmm. and you know and he's so good and it's it's it pisses me off it pisses me off I feel like the outrage only lasted so long because he worked for WWE for a short time and people see stars in their eyes when they see somebody they get signed and they think that it's going to do something for them automatically. And it's disgusting. Like I like not to cut you off, but I've seen so many of like the boys are like, you know, cool with him that have never been cool with him before. And they're like, Oh, that's my boy. And they're working for him and working for his company. And I'm like, you didn't give two shits about him 10 years ago. Now all of a sudden he's your boy because he had a small run in WWE. Like it's disgusting. It's disgusting. So sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just, like, no, you're, so good. Riled. <laughs> you're good. And then the worst part is like you said, we're taught to shut up. We're taught to be quiet from the time we start training. And that's mm-hmm. the problem mm-hmm. because that does not apply to you seeing someone being sexually harassed, you seeing someone in an uncomfortable situation, mm-hmm. you know, it, it needs to change. Yeah. Um, s- something I wanted to bring up too, uh, cause I was like, I really don't want to forget this thought. And they were talking about customs, right? Mm-hmm. So newsflash people, guys do customs too, but nobody mm-hmm. says anything. And, and this and is something- They make a lot of money. <laughs> they make a lot of money. Um, you know, uh, I've actually worked a, a really good professional custom, like really good. Um, everybody was in their gear. You know, it, it, I, I look at it like, oh, you know, okay. You know, and I, I did it in a photography sense, you know, and everything was really professional. Everything stayed on time and all that. Um, but one thing I just wanted to bring up is like when people talk about like, oh, well, you know, look at the way she was dressed in her gear and da 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 da. Hey, newsflash people, most of these guys are in trunks and knee pads. <laughs> What's yep. really more sexual? Like, like dead serious. If you see a guy that's extremely oiled up and he has knee pads and sparkly trunks, He's giving off more sexual vibes than any woman that's in, you know, maybe short shorts and a top. 
you know, like, so I, that's something that's always bothered me, you know, about the situation. Like, I get it, you know, I get, I get these people like trying to make an issue and always like trying to be like, Oh, well, did you see that? Yeah. Well, guess what? This dude, his shorts were so high that his whole butt was out. Are you hitting on, are, are, is he disgusting too? No. Mm -hmm. Like these people are out here to wrestle in a ring. Like mm -hmm. chill out people. Like don't, don't come at these women like that. And, and something, a lot of this stuff is and that Amber was saying is, you know, like it, it messes with me a lot too, because, um, you know, uh, like I said, I'm not going to say names, uh, but you know, Amber, well, all of you have met this person, but we knew somebody and she wanted to wrestle and learn how to wrestle at a very, very young age. And, um, you know, and we brought her around to certain shows and it came to a point where it was like, you can't come to this show anymore because of what this guy just said to you. You're too young for that. We're not going to let this happen to you anymore. Mm -hmm. No. In the story. And don't and, and this is another thing I want to say about this whole thing too. Like for anybody listening, don't get it twisted. This happens in wrestling. Like Amber and Chrissy said, this isn't just like, oh, there's one company. No, it's 2020, and I've still been in locker rooms and I've still heard people like, oh man, go to Blake. We should ask who they should book. And then they ask me, and I'm like, oh hey, Lady Frost is really talented, or Faye Jackson is is really would be really good for this, or oh, man, maybe you should bring this person in. And they're like, oh, well, Blake, who do you know? Are they hot? I'm like, dude, it's 2020. Is this still a question? Are they hot? Like, who cares if they're hot? They can work. They can work. They can make this crowd pop. Crowd will want to see them, and they can get it done in a ring. Why, why is this the first thing being asked? It's mm -hmm. 2020. Women's wrestling is the biggest thing in wrestling, whether anybody wants to agree with it or not. <laughs> Stop asking me like, oh, well, you think they're pretty enough? Oh, do they have enough sex appeal? Guess what? They can outwork most of your men on the roster. Let's let. How about you think about bringing in that person? Mm -hmm. It's frustrating. It, it is, um, and that's the thing that's always frustrated me. Um, one of the things that I always wanted to make sure was that you know part of earning the ladies' respect that I was going to go out there from a social media standpoint and portray their characters the way they were, you know, whatever Chrissy was doing, like, especially like, I'm telling y'all, it was so much fun capturing Chrissy because she would look at me while I was holding the phone, you know, for social media as if she hated me. <laughs> and it was great because it was, she was in full character, you know, and you had to reckon it and all of them, like they were such full characters and, you know, and then it was the, the art of wrestling. And, you know, I didn't want her to have to worry about, okay, if I turn around, is he just going to sneak a picture of my butt and put it on social media, you know? Or is he going to do that to one of the girls that's in my group? And it, it, even with Hugh, I, I'm speaking of because that's my brother. And, um, and, and the thing is, when he did his photos, it was the same thing. It was capturing the moment, capturing, you know, and, and like I said, I've been with, uh, Blake on photo shoot, sit side by side or, or capture videos when he was doing implied nudes because this is what that person wanted to do. But you never saw him snap a picture in between a shot. Like, oh yeah, let me get this real quick. Aha, I'm gonna go sell this on the internet, you know? Mm -hmm. And you see photographers. And that's one of the things that a, a veteran like Andy Social said when I interviewed her, she was like, you know, you don't have to worry about when you do dealing with Blizz photography, somebody taking a thousand pictures of your crotch. You ain't have to worry about that, you know. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that's frustrating. And, and this stuff happens to men, too. It, it, it's not that it's just happening to women. But right now, this is what we're discussing. It's, it's just so sickening. And, and right now, like we said, you know, the, I hate the word movement a lot of times because the movement to me ends but understanding, you know, what Me Too stands for, it, and it moves into Time's Up. It's Time's Up for all this stuff, you know? I, I, I'm, I, and, and that's why, like I said, I wanted to really have this conversation because it is important for us to have these conversations so that people out there, if you're dealing with this, you speak up, you know? And if you can't, go to somebody, 
you know, but don't go back if you can help it. Don't go back. Well, really, you know, I would hope because I don't see maybe y'all know better than me. I don't see I haven't seen any game change. I think Blick used to use the words. Is anybody paying you enough that you change your whole lifestyle? Around? No, no, they're <laughs> and not. The, they're exactly. Not. Look, you're getting you're getting a nice belt. So what? So what? I, I got getting, them. I bought those. Yeah, like, <laughs> like hey, look, I, I, I'm not trying to sit here and, and I'm, uh, he's not paying me for a sponsor. But if you want a nice belt, Ruckus can make you a nice belt. I'm telling you, it's nicer than the company's belts. He can make it for you. But the thing about it is, and I mean, cut you off, Brian. No, nah, yes, I, I set like, it up for you. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's one of those things where like, if you're a champion for a company, if you're one of the top people for the company and you know this is happening, you know the stories, even if it's happened to you and you decide to keep quiet because in your heart, you don't feel like you don't, maybe you don't feel like you can get a better booking. But if you believe in yourself, you can get a better booking. Don't do this. Like, that's why I was so proud of like Ava Everett. If anybody reads what Ava Everett said, she 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 put it all out there. Mm-hmm. She went to these companies, you know, she said this, she had the matches, but she saw how she was getting, you know, treated. And then the Lefisto thing, it opened her eyes and she decided to leave. Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking about an amazing talent that could have, you know, could have been a champion again in a company or any company that she was working with or whatever the case may be. And she had to make that decision for herself to empower herself. And so many people had her back with that decision. Don't be scared of losing a booking from a Fed that can barely pay for your Quadava or Quiznos or, or Subway or your Wawa. Like, they didn't even give you a hand, a hot dog. Yeah, like it, it's it's just like it's it's one of those things. We anybody. Anybody can get somewhere if they believe in themselves. And like you said, it's not just happening to women. It's happening to males. You know, it's, it, it's, it's happening to all types of people. And that's why, like, any way for me that I can show support, you know, like, Chrissy knows, Amber knows, Brian, you know. Like, if these people know me, just I'll talk to you about your problem. I'm not like a psychologist or anything. You, you sure? Know. <laughs> I, I mean. Because, boy, in 2013. Would, yeah, you know, like 2014 for me, <laughs> 2012 for me. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, you know, like I'm gonna try to give you the best advice to make you know how important you are. You mm-hmm. know, that was the whole reason for the photography. And Chrissy will tell you, like, when when her and I reconnected, I was like, "Yo, I know you're going through something, but I want to do this photo shoot with you, so you have these photos to know who you are. Don't let these bad times bring you down." And even as a person, I can, you know, I'm, I'm trying to remind these people who they are and, and don't let these companies make you feel like, oh, you know, like, oh, I'm not worth it because you will get owners of these companies that'll be like, oh, you know, if you leave here, you're nothing without me or, hey, you know, I made this person. You can't make a person. This isn't like a Nintendo Switch and you just turn it on and go, I'm going to play as Amber Rodriguez. I made them. No. You gave them a canvas and they painted on it. And that's why I always said that to all these girls. This is the idea. This is your canvas. You paint it. And then afterwards, we'll sell the painting together. End of discussion. Dummies. Like, I I hate The problem is, I don't mean to cut you off, but the problem is a lot of women are discouraged from saying something, from speaking up. Because you know what it is? When we get sexually assaulted, harassed, raped we're seen as what a rat oh yeah she gets around Mm. yeah she wanted it yeah she slept with so-and-so oh she got that booking because she slept with so-and-so or she gave the promoter head that's always what it is it's never changed and that's why a lot of women don't want to say anything because Mm -hmm. they don't want that rep Mm -hmm. and it's disgusting like yeah sure you know males are going through it too i can't speak for that because i'm not a guy but you know Personally, I've seen, I've lived it. I've Mm -hmm. been scared to speak up. Like, oh, people are going to think, you know, I'm a rat. They're going to flip the narrative. And, you know, I'm going to be out. And I'm going to be canceled. And it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's got to change. It's got to change right now. 
I don't give a darn if a woman has slept with 19 other boys. If the 20th person, if the 20th person sexually harasses her, it that needs to stop. And that person should no longer receive a booking. Quite frankly, all the other 19 guys should beat his ass. And, yeah. and it's very rare, you know, I, I use language on my show, but that's the thing. I, I I just that this is like one of them subjects that just like makes me angry is when I hear about these stories, when I hear that these women get put down. You know, I ain't gonna sit up here and lie and say, you know, I when I was younger, I was a little ignorant to a lot of things, you know. But as I got older, I matured and I've never done anything. But you know, I would be, I might have thought like, well, maybe she shouldn't have did this, or maybe she shouldn't have been in that place. No, no. As as a father of a 10 year old male, it is my job to teach him how to treat women. Not mm-hmm. me to sit up here and tell my daughter, oh, you shouldn't dress like that. You shouldn't do that. But it is my job to teach my son, you don't touch a woman who she doesn't want to be touched. And that's mm-hmm. the thing that just really, just this whole thing, like I said, you know, like I said, I'm glad we're having this conversation because it has to stop. And, you know, really, it, 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 I bring a blink. It's it has to start with people like us to be allies, and we have to build the allegiance so that Chrissy and Amber can go around. And if they something does happen, they can feel comfortable saying stuff. You know, the people, if stuff like this happens, they can say, "All right, well, I can go to this guy." I can go to that guy. Obviously, me and Blake can't change the world, just the two of us. But the people out there listening right now, you have to do that. You have to stop putting the judgment on these ladies. There's only one judge, and it ain't you. <laughs> oh, and, and also, too, to add to this, a lot of times in wrestling, you hear this thing like, oh, we're a family. We're a family. We're a family. Oh, yeah. Well, if we're a family... When it's convenient. Yeah, but, that, but that's the thing. Like, if we're a family then treat these girls like your sisters when you know stuff like this has happened. You know, like, there's a reason why there's certain people, when you tell them, they ready to pop off, you know, and they ready to be like, all right, well, cool, we're going to settle this. Look, quick story, like, I'm, I'm friends with a lot of the women, and it's because I earned their respect. There was one time at WSU, and Brian, you'll remember this, this might be new for you, Amber, where... Uh, somebody, uh, another guy um, that was in wrestling, he he said some derogatory stuff about me because he didn't know what I was actually doing. And when them girls found out, like, they was like, well, you're not even going to have a chance to say anything to him. We're not even going to let you have the conversation. And it was Amber, just... You remember, was, the, you remember the skate zone? Yeah. So you know where, the, yeah. where he used to do the photography at, right? Yeah. Uh, I kid you not, a lineup. Yeah, a line. And, and me and Hugh was the only two guys. The rest was the ladies. Chrissy was there. That's why she's laughing. Mm-hmm. It was a lineup <laughs> waiting because yeah. they was ready to pounce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and and if it wasn't for, like, Chrissy and Missy, they, like, they were the main ones, Chrissy and Missy, that rhymes. Anyway, <laughs> if it wasn't for, like, uh, Chrissy and Missy, they were the main ones, like, all you got to do is give the sign. Like, just just say what's up and we got this. And I was like, no, I'm a man. I can handle this myself, which I did. But the guy had to walk through and it, it was like, it was crazy. You, <laughs> Dude, know? You, and, you didn't see the look on his face when he walked out, though. He's like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> yeah, you know? and, and, like, I'll give the guy props. Like, he talked to me like a man. We talked it out. He apologized. He's like, yo, I didn't know this is what you did. Da, 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 da. I'm like, yeah, man, I got to do seven jobs back here. Like, don't come at me like that. But <laughs> he, gave, he even gave you props on your uh, support on Lefisto's post. Exactly. We never had a problem ever since. It was a <laughs> misunderstanding. But the more of the story was like, Amber, these, these women, it was like some Wu-Tang Clan stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. if, if I would have just been like, yo, do this, like, we, I don't know, like, I don't know what would have happened, you know, like it, Chrissy it looking like, oh, she knows Yeah, you know I like, was ready to throw hands, I was like, just say the word He never lets me fight, he never lets me fight I ne- was Never, afraid, never You know, but, but that's the solidarity like, and for me they know I got them like that you know, like we said at the beginning like, I was Chrissy's, you know, male of honor in her wedding, that's, that's not 
you know, this goes beyond wrestling. It's because I know she's got my back and I got hers. And that's how I looked at the whole roster. And that's, if you claiming that we're a family, we're a family, we're a family, then some of these guys, you need to look at these girls like that's your family. Now, if you date with them or whatever, I mean, that's, it is what it is. But look out for these girls. And vice versa, they will look out for you because as I, as I learned, <laughs> they mad thorough as well. So don't you ever, <laughs> you know, underestimate them. And, and bottom line is, you know, be bad enough, they already got to deal with the fans. We, we can't police the fans, but we can police the locker room. You know, you're yes. going to have a bunch of creeps. You're going to have Twitter. You're going to have Instagram. You're going to have Facebook. All these trolls, you know, they, they, they act like, you know, they send in friend requests because they mean good. They'll purchase merchandise. All of a sudden, they think they own you. And, and, and so it's like the men as allies, we should go out there and make sure we align with them and support. I don't want to use the word protect. I'll say support, you know. That's I, the I, word. That's yeah, the word. Because so, I, I ain't gonna lie, I, I got in trouble with one of my friends for using the word protect. <laughs> you know, they said, would you want a white person protecting a black person? No, you want them to support you. So mm-hmm. we, we have to go out there and support. You know, if I'm, you know, like at shows, me and Amber will be walking around together, you know, and we talk and yada, yada, yada. If I see somebody say something to it, if I see a promoter say something to it out the way, I'm going to speak up, you know? I know Blake would do the same thing. He's going to do that. That's even people. happened one time. It wasn't a promoter, but it was somebody there. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And, and and so, you know, and that's the thing. The, the time is up. Yeah. And, and the thing is, too, like, and, and it, it's even with sexual harassment, there's other things, too. Like, there's so much. Like, uh, you know, I remember a story of there was three girls about to come to um, our fed and I was only familiar with like one of them. Um, and I wasn't familiar with the other two. And one of them I had to ask Brian about, but when I was asking, you know, the, the guy to run the place, I'm like, well, is, is this girl good? Like, what do they bring to the table? And the answer was like, you know, it doesn't matter. All three are hot. And one of them is a black chick with a really nice butt. And that's what we need. That was the answer. And then I, I'm like, well, that's not good enough for me. Mm-hmm. So I had to ask Brian about the one girl and do what I always do, do my research on a person. And then, you know, two of the three people came to the Fed and they both were spectacular workers. It wasn't like, oh, let's fit the quota, you know, because I'll never forget that. Oh, she was a black girl. One of them was a black girl with a really nice butt. We need more black girls. You know, like, who, what? We need the best talent. That's what we need. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, man! Like, it, it, it's, and, and you know what? This is the, the this is the spiritual side of me coming out. That's why the company couldn't prosper. It, it, granted, what happened was we had built great relationships and you know personal friendships, you know. But when you really look at it, the company couldn't prosper because you essentially had the devil running it, you know. And and, and it, it sucks because. I, I look at the work Chrissy was doing and the attention to detail. I looked at the work that Blake was doing. Then some other people, Leva Bates, uh, Mia Yim, um, you know, so Ke- many people. Kiara Hogan, Kiara you Hogan, know, a bunch of people. Putting the attention to detail in their characters. And that's why great things coming, have come, going to come out of all that. And, you know, the head eventually is going to fall over. But it's it's really sad, you know, when I got a chance to see Amber uh down in um outside of New Orleans. I can't remember the name of the exact Don't town. Elevate Brittany. Huh? <laughs> elevate Pro. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying I couldn't remember the name of the town. Oh, yeah, that was uh <laughs> Chalmette, yeah, Louisiana. That, yeah. Um but the the thing that I was able I loved about the promotion was seeing the respect. I love seeing a woman being in charge take lead and you could see and i remember like call, uh texting blake or calling him even later like maybe it was a couple of days because that was a rough weekend with the events of kobe but i was like man you would love this down here because you <laughs> saw the way the crowd interacted you saw the way that everybody was treated with respect you saw the time and i remember you was even you praised your opponent because you yeah. said y'all worked well together and this she was working that guy folks but there's to show you that there are good guys in the business outside of me and Blake, you know, shout out to Greg. Excellent. He's another, Greg phenomenal, up. you know, um, you know, uh, it's just so many 
you know, it's, it's it, it, and this is one of those things. Yes, when there's bad apples, the bad apples got to go. They can't stick around. It's like in anything. And if I could interject and say, shout out to Dale Springs again. That's who I worked that night. He is such a gentleman, such mm -hmm. a great man to work with. And I'd, I'd work that guy in my sleep. And <laughs> shout out to Brittany, ultimately. Brittany mm -hmm. Nicole, she runs Elevate Pro. She is one of the only female promoters out here. Like, she's the best one that I know. And she runs a tight ship. Mm -hmm. Like, she said to me, my first day working there, hey, if there's anything in this locker room that makes you uncomfortable, come and tell me. And uh, Ben, Ben would also, you know, he runs it with her. And just that's the important thing right there. So that, great. It was so great and so professional. Words, you know, those words, that, that's the thing that's very important because, you know, I, I, I remember Blake getting up passionately uh, I can't believe I'm saying this many great things about this guy. Uh, hey, man, keep him coming, man. <laughs> keep him coming. But I remember him getting up in the locker room meeting, and Chrissy was there, and he said, and this may have been, I think this was Hugh's first WSU show. He said, this ain't about a company of booking girls that somebody wants to, and he used the F word. He said, this is about booking the best talent. You know, and I know that those individual conversations have like, hey, if you don't feel comfortable, say something because we're putting stuff, we're nipping stuff in the bud. And this is what we need the men out there in the locker rooms, the wrestlers, the photographers, any role that you play in wrestling, you have to speak up. If you see something, forget the bookers. I promise you, I, I promise you that if you speak up in a positive way, something positive will come from another direction. We need oh, advocates yeah. and we need allies because the unfortunate truth is as far as women's wrestling have, has come, and I'm very proud of it, but it is a male-dominated sport. It is. And we need these men to speak up and, like you said, be that ally, be that advocate. You know, when you see something, say something. I sound like I'm at my job, but yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> say something. That's the truth, though. You know, I saw it. You know, I didn't go say I saw it. I know, and I, I don't care because I'm not going back there. But at ESPN, it's the same thing. You know, person who wrote this book, if you open it up, um, it says, from the first on-air talent to sue ESPN for sexual harassment. And, and that's the thing. And in this, inside the book, it tells you, in male-dominated spaces, these things happen in places, entertainment, customer service, so forth. These things happen, and it's not going to stop if, like Amber says, we the men do not be allies. And yeah, and, a, and a, another big thing, too, for anybody that's listening that don't know how to be an ally or aren't comfortable with a lot of things or feel like their, their voice isn't powerful enough, you can use this easy trick. Like, one of the things, hey, I was born this way. Like, you know, better to give than receive. Look out for your women, yada, yada, yada. But one of the things I think about in wrestling, and one of the reasons why I take it so seriously, is I think about the people that took their time to help me. So if I get into a predicament, I'm like, well, I can't let Daisy Hayes down. I can't let Sarah Del Rey down. I can't let Ruckus down. What would they, you know, like they took their time to mold me and to, to help me in my early beginnings. I, I can't do that. You know, uh, if, if I were to, and I can't sit there and be like, well, sh if I don't help somebody with this, Chrissy will text me and be like, well, why didn't you do that? Like, so if it's hard for you to be like, well, my voice isn't powerful enough, think about those people who had powerful voices that helped you get to where you were at. It's such, it's so many easy ways. Like everybody's voice matters. Doesn't matter who you are, the lowest on the card, the highest on the card, the janitor, photographer and everything. And like one of the things that you said, Brian, that I thought about with like you and Hugh was Lyle took his time, rest in peace, Lyle. He took out his time to show y'all where to stand at. Mm -hmm. to show you how to do this and all of that. And it's like, for me, I looked at that and was like, well, 
if I bring them around, I don't want to let Lyle down because Lyle took his time to do that for them. So it's so many things. Like, look at this. Like, these people took their time out for you. You pass that on to help other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, final thoughts. <laughs> Let's start with Christy. Any final thoughts? Uh, just basically, I just feel like, like you said, a lot of change, a lot of things have changed. A lot of things need to continue to change. I just want wrestling to, locker rooms to be a comfortable space for everybody. Um, I know it's never going to be perfect, but there's no reason why anybody, men or women, should feel uncomfortable in a place that they're giving their body. Um, you know, you're going there to work and because you love professional wrestling. Like, we all do this because we love professional wrestling. And you shouldn't have such a, a bitter taste towards it or a negative feeling towards it because of how somebody might have treated you in a locker room or, you know, treated somebody else. Like, you should be able to go to a, lot, uh, a show and not have to worry about, you know, is somebody going to say this? Is somebody going to do that to me? Just your, your peers, you know? Like, um, and that's for both men and women. Like, I feel like it just it should not be uncomfortable for anybody. You know, it should, things definitely need to get better. And I feel like why I've been speaking up so much, I know a lot of people are probably annoyed, not you guys, but a lot of people are annoyed because it's like, oh, Chrissy is like always like yelling on Twitter and saying this is because I'm so passionate about wrestling. And wrestling has given me a lot of great things uh, that I don't want anybody else to have to like, deal with the neg so much negative or deal with the harassment or deal with this and deal with that so like if you have to hear my mouth on twitter for a little bit of a while like a little while longer like i guess that's what i have to do but um i have two words for you keep talking <laughs> and i'm gonna keep retweeting i'm gonna keep retweeting <laughs> sometimes i get riled up on there but it's only because not because i'm bitter or i'm mad at a a single individual is just because I'm so passionate for what I've worked so hard for and what we've all worked so hard for to see it treated that way. Um, so I just, I just wanted to be better and everybody to feel comfortable. So Amber. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys a little bit of my story um, and shout out to Monteezy because apply pressure is coming out soon and that's where you can see my full yes, story. Let's go Monteezy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Get that music in, bro. Uh, more than just music. More than just music. I, I, I know, I know. Trust me. That's that's like one of the one of the fans. <laughs> so trust yes. me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, apply pressure is coming out soon. That's where you can see my full story. But I'll say this. So I started wrestling at 15. It's something I always wanted to do, grew up watching it, right? I left wrestling uh, in November 2015. Um, I was blessed to have my last match with somebody that I grew up watching um, in Mickey James. And not trying to put myself over, but just saying, like, I was at a peak in my career. I was at a high point in my career. And I walked away. I gave it all up. Uh, I left. I joined the military. And it happened so abruptly, and no one knew why. Um, I was sexually assaulted. And it happened in a locker room. And it completely destroyed everything for me. Uh, I started wrestling again uh, January in 2020. Uh, shout out again to Brittany and Elevate for welcoming me the way that they did. Um, I came back to it because at one point, I sat and I looked in the mirror and I said, you know what, I'm not going to allow these men to have that power over me anymore. Why should they continue to do this? And I stood out on something I love because of a traumatic event. And as traumatic as it was, I'm happy to say I came back from it. And to anyone watching, if it means anything, you can too. I have a daughter now um and my biggest biggest goal in life is for her to see 
that her mother didn't give up. Her mother came back to doing what she loved and came back and fucking killed it. <laughs> and so I say that to say, don't give up on what you're doing. If something happens to you, you have resources, you have ears out there. Reach out, talk about it, get help, go to therapy. You can come back from it. You can. And it will be even better for you and it will be an even sweeter feeling for you. So. <laughs> wow, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of you. I haven't talked to you in a few years, but <laughs> I knew you when you were really young too. And you've like matured so much. And I'm so proud of you for even telling your story because I know how hard it is just as, not even as a woman, but just as a human to like, come out and say something like that and how you've just like how much better you are and and your life is better and you're a perfect example of making it out on the other side so Thank I'm you. trying not to cry so <laughs> I'm gonna let yeah. talk <laughs> um <laughs> uh I also want to say too because it's been a couple years since I've been able to talk to you too Amber and it's so good to see you and hear your voice again and stuff like that. And um, I'm trying my best not to weep up um, <laughs> just because part of me is like, damn, man, like, I, you know, you wish you would have known these things, you know, the, the give the helping hand that you always gave. But, you know, it's like, well, at least, you know, now and you, when you meet people like you, I, I know it's just like, seeing somebody like you just haven't talked to them for like a day and you know and I, I look forward to reconnecting and um catching up and it your speech right there was just so powerful because even for somebody like myself that's been going through a lot of depressing things and a lot of stuff's happened in the last two years you know just having another familiar voice giving a story and talking about don't give up it it's definitely something that helps me with every day, you know, but beyond wrestling of just not giving up. And um, it's just, you know, I'm just so glad to see you're healthy and you're happy and, you know, you're passing on a message to other people, even with it being so painful. And um, for the last thing I really have to say is just very random. Um, you know, you want to see you want to see change in wrestling. Period. You want to see acceptance for everybody, every role. Um, and we, I hope that we can start to appreciate it. Like you were just talking about Montez, he's another guy that does a lot for wrestling, and you know, a lot of people don't really appreciate it unless like a bigger name says something. And I think those days need to stop with so many people because we all work so hard and. Um, you know, I just want to give, like, special shout-outs not only to these two queens that's on here, Amber and Chrissy, but, like, to queens like Faye and to, like, Candy Lee and Aspen Rose and Quinn McKay and Allie, you know, like, personally, they might not know why I'm calling them queen, but Allie might because we play Animal Crossing. <laughs> but, you know, like, they've done a lot to bring awareness and even with this right now um i hope this brings a, a lot of awareness shout out to nyla rose too yes um she told me quick story she did tell me that i was like i'm gonna talk to amber this is when we thought you were going to be on saturday before you no showed and went to another town oh my um, god <laughs> you know she told me she was like oh you're gonna talk to amber she's like I hope you got some time to sit down, you know, and I was like, yeah, it's been a minute. So, uh, That'll come but, for the uh, post show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but I, I'm just really happy to have all three of you on here. And like I said, that, that last speech was really powerful. And, um, I ain't gonna let, I ain't gonna let no social media see no tears in my eyes though. You know? <laughs> post show maybe, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna suck it up right now. <laughs> Ooh, man, what a night, you know, um, to Chrissy, I remember when I first started going to uh, MCW and 
to use with Blackout. And I was like just a huge fan of Blackout. Shout out to uh, Brandon Guy. Because I remember I was like, man, I, I want to meet Blackout. You know, and I didn't get a chance to meet you. And who would have known that a decade later, you know, you'd be one of my friends and playing um, Friday the 13th with, <laughs> which we haven't no. done in so long, to, mm-hmm. uh, to Amber, like you said. I mean, I've known you since you were a child. And now to see you growing up with a child and, you know, just as they say, doing the damn thing, you know, I'm just so proud to Blake, somebody who's for many people may not, they should know by now. I mean, you know, I'm always giving them shout outs on the show, especially when it comes to uh, women's wrestling. Funny story. So I'll tell you, you know, y'all may not know this. So the first time me and Blake met, we was on our way to a TNA show. And I remember Batman had just came out. And matter of fact, it's actually that's my <laughs> Blake's already shaking his head. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Batman, the other one, had just came out. And he was like, you see that new Batman movie? I'm like, no. He was like, oh, okay. And I know his thought was, wait, this dude don't watch superheroes? Because I didn't. I just watch wrestling and, and Power Rangers, which I just finally saw the new Power Rangers movie. and. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember the next conversation we started talking about wrestling and we talked about women's wrestling and I think I named a wrestler and he was like oh yeah she used to be matter of fact it was uh Sienna Duvall <laughs> and he was like used to be simply divine I said yeah and next thing you know it was just like things just clicked and you know I was like wait so this guy actually like knows his women's wrestling and then that <laughs> Monday uh Shine had just started and I was like, hey, man, you see Shine? Yeah. I said, so what you think about this one? And what you think about that one? And from then on, you know, we've just been, like, the best of friends. So, uh, like I said, I've always appreciated the opportunity to be able to uh, work in wrestling and, you know, you know, be able to work under his tutelage and learn so much. And, you know, Jazz, yes, folks, Jazz, the legend, former WWE Women's Champion. I'll never forget telling her, how Blake was teaching me about the business. And she said, he's a nice young man and he knows his stuff. So I miss Jazz so much. <laughs> so, you know, um, I'm, I'm just so happy that, you know, I have friends in all of you and I'm happy y'all were able to take time out your busy schedule to do this show. And we have this conversation and keep this conversation going. To the people out there watching, to the men, the allies, and, and, and if you have these urges to do things that you shouldn't, go seek help. They have psychiatrists for that. You need to see a psychiatrist. If you don't know how to treat a woman, you need to go see a psychiatrist. You need to seek help because women do not deserve that. They deserve to be treated with respect, honor, and dignity. To the women, Find the confident. Find somebody you can speak to. Before we get out of here, Christy, let the people know where they can find you. Oh, no. I, I don't remember my, my social media handles. Oh, my goodness I, gracious. Oh, my God. Don't look for me on Facebook because I barely use Facebook anymore. Um, but you can find me on Instagram. It's underscore hello, Chris, underscore Chrissy. And hello, Chrissy on Twitter. Um, if you go to Blake's Twitter, you'll probably see us interacting or Brian's <laughs> Twitter. So you'll probably find me on there. <laughs> Amber. Oh, she she went mute. <laughs> oh no, oh, she's mute. Oh, that. oh no. First That's you no a- show and now you're mute. We can't hear you, but I, I, I'll tell y'all. You're getting upset. Yeah, <laughs> since, since this is what I do, apparently, her social media. Yeah. You can find her at Amber Juan Rodriguez <laughs> and on Facebook. <laughs> like her fan page at Amber Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> and her uh, Instagram at Lorena, <laughs> Lorena Renegada. <laughs> <laughs> See, why oh you my goodness! For me, you put me on the spot to remember my I, my, I, my social media handles. Because yeah. I always have to run hers. We, we, you should have seen us that night trying to figure out her password. Oh <laughs> my gosh! Like, oh let, my goodness! Like, let them know people where they can find you. Uh, well, um, you can find me at uh, it's Blizz 
I T S B L I Z on Instagram and on the Twitter machine. I don't have anybody that can, you know, play me out the way that Brian just did for Amber. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys know, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to the Wrestling Realm at Wrestling Realm. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and follow. <laughs> Excuse me. It always, it, it, I almost thought I had a show. I got away without one, but didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, follow me at Brian H. Waters. Until the next time, folks. So long. Hold everybody. up. Before you go, before you go. Yeah. One thing I want to say to the people. Oh, mm-hmm. boy. This is the one thing I want to say. If you play Animal Crossing <laughs> and you have a spike in turnips and you are not at me and telling me you have a spike on your island, how dare you? You don't like how people. Dare you? Ah, that's true. Never mind. <laughs> don't like, tell me about your spike unless I know you. Unbelievable. Brian sneezing. We can't even hear Amber. Everything's falling I apart. I think Amber hit the mute turnips. button. Amber, check uh, the mute button. Did you hit the uh, mute button? No, I, she didn't hit mute. <laughs> It popped up and then it popped off. (laughs) Until next time, folks. (laughs) So long, everybody. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Break It Down with Brian H. Hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you get notified every time the Wrestling Realm posts new content.